Good morning guys, how are we all doing? I am Dan from Trading with Dan. This is our Bitcoin morning update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go straight over to those Bitcoin four hour charts. So things are not looking too good here uh, with Bitcoin and with the wider markets. There are definitely um, definitely some uh, warning, warning flags uh, all over the place uh, in uh, in a number of the various finance 1.0 markets which we're going to look at in the moment so uh, i mean very simply put um if these markets continue to deteriorate uh, as in the finance 1.0 markets today uh, then we are we are def we are going to lose this level we're going to lose this support area and we're going to test in towards uh, uh 38000 or maybe even have a breakdown as low as 36000 it could get pretty aggressive to the downside um so yeah not much else other than that and if we don't if we get a turnaround if we do get these markets recover or relieve a bit of the finance 1.0 markets then yeah maybe we can hold this level at this at this at this juncture um, but obviously getting above uh, 44 is clearly going to be a, be a bit of an ask at the moment in the present conditions. So if you want to go and look at some of those other markets, obviously here's our Ethereum Satoshi pair in our barometer of risk clearly showing that uh, there is a, there is a, an increased fear in the market obviously with this down price downward movement in price but um but yeah the s p as you can see uh it has lose this whole this uh, uh trend line support has lose this horizontal support <clears throat> currently bounced off this next level of support um however it is uh it is in a level of old support new resistance now uh so it has got to try and get break above here but like i said can easily be resist we can easily get resisted here rejected and then come down and test even lower um towards well basically towards the uh this 4500 level and um, we'd obviously have the underside of the trend line and the underside of this horizontal resistance so um it's got a lot of work to do but like i said if it can get above it will look like a a bit of a swing failure and then we could get an acceleration upwards on onwards and upwards back towards the top of um what you could look at as a if we are to get back above today you could look at this as a just a, a bit of erroneous price action below and that could be what accelerates back to the top and breaking up um but obviously we'll have to see that to decide if that's going to happen i mean again as i said in yesterday's video and a few videos this oil price is clearly um <coughs> causing problems uh oil uh going uh, oil in its last big run up where it went up to over 140 dollars that did uh that was directly uh the, the direct cause of a recession at, at that point because um, that was just too high prices uh, and obviously in the face of everything high prices this continuing upwards um, even from here um, but to get over 100 it's just gonna it is just gonna absolutely mess things up uh, the irony of the situation it is all those uh, all the it is the poorer people that will suffer and it is uh, these eco eco activists tend to be like the richer people uh, who don't really worry about petrol prices as much or things like or just rising costs as much because their assets uh, inf in inflate at a faster rate than their expenses uh, inflate. Um, also, also ironically, uh, the previous president of the United States did get a uh, did get America somewhat energy independent. You can call it, I say somewhat because technically they were, um, but the or the shale shale oil is uh, is light sweet crude as opposed to heavy sour, um, which heavy sour is what you use uh, most most the economy uses most for diesel and obviously heavy industry and um, so but nonetheless it was creating light sweet which they can obviously then export and then import the the heavy sour but at, at basically they were uh, energy independent and obviously now they're not because um because of all the uh the asinine uh uh policies but um yeah so um trouble for them uh what else here we go more trouble more trouble 10 year um pro i personally think getting driven by the oil price and just by fears from that um like i said if we have a move if this plays out as a bull flag which it clearly looks like it is but two uh pretty much it's projected targets uh which we'll actually draw on uh just to see roughly where they are probably from down i mean we'll do it we'll do it we'll be a bit conservative and do it from here yeah we are looking at above basically above two percent so that is gonna be the 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 the, the alarm bells uh the, that, that is gonna be the call to action for the fed you can't see 10 years over two percent um they're gonna have to uh well do something and like i said they can't raise rates to fight this 
uh, they are going to have to try and do yield curve control or just distribute money to people uh, to allow them to pay the higher prices. This is why the DXY is not going wild in the context of this uh, this negativity. It has, has obviously had a bounce, but we are uh, still trading below all this price action, below this resistance. So we could clearly break above here and continue onwards and onwards, but um the market does have to balance uh, um, in whatever uh, potential future extraordinary measures the fed's gonna uh, come up with um whatever cock many ideas are gonna come up with uh, to do anything other than just increase rates to about 15 percent uh, which would what would be realistically needed um although having said that that would be realistic what is needed to take real rates positive but however you don't necessarily need to take real rates positive to fight inflation you just need to cause a recession and i mean basically over two percent rates will cause a recession and then that would then bring basically uh, inflation into well being inflation back down and actually take us straight back into that dreaded deflation which obviously is the actual boogeyman for the fed and this and this fiat financial ponzi scheme uh, deflation is what destroys it inflation is just what um causes uh, just increased wealth inequality it's not a problem inflation is not a problem um for the elites the wealthy the people in charge inflation is actually good makes them richer makes them relatively richer but the problem is it just causes the, the only downside is just social uh, social unrest um once once the uh, once the frog realizes it's boiling uh so yeah there you go um what and what, what else to look at i mean we 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 glanced over these uh ethereum usd pairing uh as you can see uh rejected here uh still within the side edge range if we do lose this well basically around just under 3000 uh actually probably nearer 2900 2800 area then yeah it is going to look particularly bad um bitcoin dominance as well having a little bit of a move up as you can see still below this high currently so <laughs> we we need a turnaround basically in finance one point oh, that oil price needs to ease off uh the 10-year yield needs to ease off uh stock markets need to start moving i think i think there is a definite <laughs> there is a definite call to action here uh and i i wouldn't be surprised if something does come out of the fed this week that does kind of put markets because uh, otherwise, it's, it is looking particularly dire here. Uh, so let's look at the four hour, four hour uh, low and holding low and still turning down. But I mean, obviously, at some point can get a bit of a uh, can, can start to trend upwards and support price action. Maybe one last time at this support area, maybe depending on what just happened. I, I'm sure 10 and 12 hour turning back down here. Uh, I mean, yeah, say turning back down. 10 hour did run all the way up and now it's coming all the way back down, actually. Uh, 12 hour diving here daily uh flip flopping around here um so we'll have to see how how that how that happens two day still pointing up three day uh pointing lower down now and then the five day and the weekly we'll look at still diving so like i said that like well not that it's uh the optimistic view but we're just waiting for this five day and weekly to turn back up in my opinion and obviously where the bitcoin price is at the point that it does turn up is obviously the question um, but yeah, it could very well be uh, um, sub 40,000. It could be 38,000. It could be uh, 35, 36,000. And then, yeah, then we can get that significant bounce. Um, where that significant bounce takes us, uh, we'll have to see. Does it take us onwards and upwards to new all-time highs? Ultimately, we shall also have to see. It wouldn't do that, obviously, without then pulling back and putting in a high low. But uh, yeah, um, we are we are at the mercy of finance 1.0 markets. If they uh, if they deteriorate today, any anything worse than what they are at, at present, then we just we're not hold we can't hold this level. Basically, um, it is uh, it is a, a statistical uh, uh, impos improbability, uh, not impossibility. It's statistical improbability. So uh, yeah, there you go, guys. Um, yeah, apologies for a bit of the doom and gloom going on here. It's not it's not crypto or markets market specific anyway. Uh it is not our beloved market specific. It is just the wider markets that are looking pretty uh, pretty uh, dire at the moment. So yeah, fing fingers crossed fingers crossed is all we can do that the Fed just pop up with something that we can start to get a bit of a turnaround because yeah, again, like I said, things not looking good. Not not looking good. So thanks for listening. Uh, remember this is not a financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, always do your own research and I shall speak to you guys soon.